What's up guys, Golden here, and welcome to another Magic video. Today we're going to be playing Saltai. But we're not going to be playing the normal ramp version. I mean, it, it has very similar elements to the ramp version, but it's a little bit more on the control side. So this archetype has been floating around recently. I've seen it across a couple competitions. I've It's been pretty strong, and I've played against it a little bit on the ladder. Um, but this is my version of the deck. Some of the things that I wanted to include is Agonizing Remorse. I think that card is very, very good right now with the Exile Clause of the instead of just discarding. Hits those escape creatures, hits the hand against blue-white control. It'll exile to fairies and dream trawlers instead of just putting in the graveyard where your opponent can bring it back. So in my main board, I split between Thought Erasure and Agonizing Remorse. In an archetype like this, um, unlike the Esper build that I... Um, showcased earlier this week um in a build like this you don't want to have too many of them so i don't i'm not running a lot of it but i am running two thought erasures two agonizing remorse because i think that inclusion is very good so without further ado here's the deck we have agonizing remorse like i said very strong card right now exiles any of the escape creatures and also exiles any creatures, even against Mono Red, you're getting rid of stuff like Ember Cleave, you're getting stuff like Anax, it's very, very good. Epic Downfall, uh, have this in the main board. Um, there's a few decks out right now that are very popular. One in um, particular is Jeskai Fire. So this this is a very strong card against Jeskai Fire. All, pretty much all of their creatures, at least game one, are three or greater. Um, and even game two, they bring in um, Legion War Boss. Stuff like that, and those are still three or greater. So I think all of their creatures are actually three or greater. So this is good against them, and this uh, that is one of the most popular decks right now on the ladder. Um, Thought Erasure, just more discard. Tyrant Scorn against the Mono Red matchups. This will come out against any of the control matchups, but against Mono Red, it's good to have. Uh, Growth Spiral, key in any ramp deck. Um, obviously, this is one of the best ramp cards in the game, or at least in standard right now, and auto include in any. Um, Simic Ramp, uh, Mystical Disputes for the counters, Uro, obviously, probably the best ramp card now, and it's an escape creature that you can bring back. Um, one fun inclusion in the control variant of this is Atris, Oracle of Half-Truths. Um, it's just a one-of, but it's a pretty cool four-drop card that is a creature that gives you a little bit more of a mid-range because you have a creature in the middle and draws your cards. Very strong a lot of times run in like Demir or Esper builds, but I think it's a pretty cool inclusion in this deck and it works out pretty well and it, it, it puts on a little bit of pressure, which you will see in the game, one of the games coming up that can win you the game. Uh, Raskin here, good against uh, low to the ground uh, decks with the destroy. And if you can get her to nine, doesn't happen often, but if you can get her to nine and you can hit with a creature, that's your, that's a win condition. Massacre Girl in there against for the aggro. Uh, well, I'm not going to say anything about Nissa. We got Nissa in here. Uh, only three. We're not... We're, we're edgy. We're edgy. We're only running three. We're not running four. So if you want to make this in paper, I just saved you like 30 bucks. But um, obviously, you're always going to have Nissa in one of these ramp decks. Once you get to Nissa, you get her on the board. It is... Uh, game ending if you can untap with nissa if you have something like hydro crisis you just have so much mana that it's it's very hard to lose the game at that point unless you're really far behind um commence the end game this card is awesome um in a ramp deck like this i especially against other control matchups it can't be countered you can do it it's instant so you can do it at the end of their turn you draw cards you amass X, so you get a board presence and um, it's a good game finisher. This deck you get some early pressure on. You have things like Atris, you have things like um, Uro that you put on the board, um, Masker Girl. So you have pressure through the mid game. So this as a late game finisher is after they've already exhausted resources getting rid of your stuff is very, very good. Um, and Casualties of War. This is a fun card when it hits. Um, Three in the main board, one in the sideboard, and whenever you can just blow up their entire board, uh, this is, it's a ton of fun. It's a great card in any ramp deck, and I like builds that utilize Casualties of War as one of its top end stuff. And it makes it, this card is very good in the mirror too. Um, I don't have a showcase against the mirror in the video, but I did play against it. And basically, a lot of times it comes down to if you're playing against something very similar, who has more Casualties of War? 
Hydroid Crisis does the Hydroid Crisis things. All right, on the sideboard, um, mostly tailored around mono red and the control matchups. Um, our main board has a lot of stuff that can deal with like the mid range stuff. So we're looking more towards just enhancing our matchups against that. So uh, Disfigures, Aether Gusts, um, Masker Girl, Enter the God Eternal is good against aggro. I mean, it's good against like Gruul and that kind of stuff. Um, but Mono Red is one of the bigger problems for us. If they get off to a big start and we don't ramp fast enough, they can kill us too quickly for us to really react. So we really want to make our matchups against that better. Masker Girl is one of those cards that can do that. Um, against Anax, it triggers through so it can kill a lot of different things and um, it can be very important. Now it's it's five mana so it is hard to get to but so you do want to actually get your ramp into Masker Girl but um, it's a good way to turn the game back around if you're like on the back foot against Mono Red. Same thing with Enter the God Eternals because of the life gain and the amass and the killing of one of their creatures. Um, usually when you use this, you want to actually mill yourself because you want to get um, Uro in the graveyard and you want to feed Uro. So just a little little tip there that I wasn't able to really go into too much detail with in the video, but if you're using this in this deck, I recommend hitting yourself unless, you have, unless you're going against control and you're like late game and you want to get them down on cards. But um commence the end game Sec another copy of this just to bring in against your control matchups um because it's just that good and then another casualty war also against the mid-range and even control matchup mostly mid-range matchups um where you're going to get to six mana easily and you are going to find a good target for this card so that's the sideboard uh this is a very cool deck uh it's a very good deck too it's been performing very well this archetype so give it a try if you want to try to ladder up this is a good one to do it with if you're doing any of the competitions coming up i think this is a good definitely a solid choice for that um i would practice with it because there's a lot of little things that you want to make sure you you do correctly in this but i do definitely enjoy this uh deck and i recommend it so enjoy the gameplay like and subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you next time. All right, Koji, what you got? <clears throat> Play first. Um, so we've agonizing remorse early, so we're gonna keep it. Sky fires. Pretty sure that's the only one that runs that card. Hopefully we can hit something good. Lots of deafening clarions. Not really a problem for us. I mean, we just get just take the omen. Tops that. It's not good. Uh... So unless we draw something better, we'll put Vraska down next turn. Um, he's going into his turn four, so I'm just going to do this. Vraska doesn't really do much in this matchup. There we go. the next turn. Unfortunately, the Deafening Clarions can take out a lot of our stuff. Hurt our lands. Could opt not to animate the land, but I think I need to do it just so that I can take out the fairy. Forge. Okay. That's not great. But he can't uh, haste it, so that's good. I have this coming up, so I think I'm actually in a good spot here. So we're going to... Can I do both? Yeah, because this... I can't do both. <sighs> I 
I do need to get Nissa down. So we'll do it like this. We're gonna make that. We're gonna use it to take out the Cavalier. And because he is going to Definite Clarion anyways, I could just sacrifice it. No. No, the card isn't worth it. We'll just make him use his mana. Let's of course the Druid Fires and Invention. We'll see. Okay, it's fairies on three. Penrith goes down. Okay. Eh. Yeah, so because I, I. He did that because I could have plussed Vraska, animated a land, went face and won. Oh no. No, I wouldn't have been. I'm not really sure. I don't think that was. The game was really over yet, but I guess he did. take out basically all our stuff for small creatures because he well he is going to probably board in um, um, the hasty goblin whatever that thing's name is casualty of war good masker girl is good against that one card so I'm going to leave one in Nebraska. I have to take Nebraska out. Want to leave one in there? I will take. We're just gonna go in. We'll see. Good start, at least. Uh, we don't have the black mana, but we can start with the Fable Passage to get it. Uh, it might be worth not. We don't really need Duress until turn 3, so I think we just go with the Growth Spiral game plan. Okay. It's going aggressive. Just gotta crack it now. It's very okay. Stand by and watch. He's basically hitting just lands, which isn't great for us. That's how it goes. Nothing. Keep mystical to speed open. I've got it. Ah. I was hoping to be able to do that before he attacked. Oh, Teferi, of course. Well, that was bad. It's ramp. Taking the damage. It was four damage regardless, and I wanted to get off the board. Also, now we're down to four cards. Oh, there's two robbers. That's not good. Trust me, I have a plan. 
Well, assuming... Oof. I gotta get rid of those things. <laughs> it's gonna crush me. At least I can get rid of Teferi. I'll animate the breeding pool. It'll give me Mystical to speed open. Which can hit Krasis, but it can't hit Casualties of War, so... Uh, we might be in trouble here. Yeah, we're definitely in trouble here, but I don't have another choice. Just in case. Problem is we're down to six now. I'm probably not gonna find another target, I might as well. That hits because that would have just crushed me. Um, all right, let's Uro. Can I Uro again and keep three mana mystical dispute open? I think I can, but it's not ideal. So, animate the green pool. It's two green, blue, blue. I need to keep the blockers also. Eh, no, we're fine. Let's do this. Uro is a big blocker in, in and of itself. The only thing really saving me right now is the fact that, uh... Uh, that's close. He's going to casualties war this. I got I do have the counter up though. I might be able to scrape my way back into this. Nice. We have life. Unfortunately, we do that that cavalier is a problem, but we get to draw with Uro, which is nice. Um Yes! <sighs> let's go first. Alright, so, yeah, that's good. We have a ramp, we have Tyrant Scorn and Mystical Speed, so we have play against pretty much everything. Let's start with Temple. We'll keep that. I'm not sure what we're up against yet. This is either really good or really bad. Really good, alright. Growth Spiral. Um, we'll see. We want Mystical to speed open for Teferi. 
It's like traditional blue white control. Just gonna wait. Yes, please. hit that um it would have been nice to hit a land there so we could do address and have mystical dispute open we're gonna take we're gonna take the risk and try to get a land <sighs> i wonder what that is Okay, that's that's actually fine. No pay. Not sure if we even needed that, but I think that was the right decision. Turns out casualty of war, pretty good. Hush printer. I think the damage is done there, brother. At least we have a target for this. doing some damage. He's main main decking Hushbringer. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Don't want Narset on the board. Oh, that's that is a beautiful thing. he pulls out so what's bad for us here um obviously the bird um okay that's why we save that for our turn or the end of his turn i mean we will commence the end game and get a five five cool um let's try to uro first If I pay for this, I can bring Uro back too. I'm not sure if I want to do that this turn, but I'm going to give myself the option here. Let's attack first. Yeah, you know what? I think it's best. We might as well put the pressure on. Make sure we don't exile Uro. Good. Doesn't matter what else we exile. I don't think we have any. Yeah, we don't. There's no recursion in this deck, anyways. Two casualties will work. Could be very good. We'll see. Could be bad. Okay, Elspeth goes down. Glad we put down something else. Glass Casket goes down. And takes that out. Alright, that's not good. I am going to Casualties War. We have two of them anyways. Um, uh, or do I want to just put down Hydroid Crisis? So the Casualties of War is going to cost an extra one next turn. I don't have the land, so it's kind of a risk. What's he bring back? Probably Teferi. Narset, maybe. I mean, if I, I'm gonna draw a land, right? Barely. I'm going to do blue. It allows us to have both uh, Tyrant's Corn and Growth Spiral open. Let's see what he does this. Oh, nope. No, it doesn't. Forgot. Elspeth Conquers Death is a pretty good card. 
What is your last card? Alright, our opponent decides to rope us and leave. We'll see if he's even still here. Alright, commence the end game, Mr. Dispute. Yep. Um, agonizing remorse. Um, we're going to take out the Masker Girls. We are going to. Not. Oh, duress. I'm not sure if Casualties of War, another one, is really worth it. I mean, it can hit some things, but like, it's not going to really hit his Dream Trawler because he can he can protect it because it's a target effect. So uh, I'm going to go down to two of those. Take out Vraska. We're going to take out the well. I mean, the Tyrant Scorns were actually good against Hushbringer, but I don't think Hushbringer was going to be that big of a deal anyways. So we're going to take those out. Um, anything we're forgetting here that we have in that we don't need? Nope, looks good. Let's see if okay, looks like. Our opponent is still here. He was just very angry. Our opponent looks to have left, so this might be an easy win. That's a shame, too. I mean, the first game was, wasn't a bad game. I'll probably keep this in the video just so you can see how it does against blue white control it is pretty good against blue white control all right well okay maybe he's here maybe he just timed out uh we're gonna keep this we have a thought eraser and agonizing remorse which are both good oh he is still here oh man he was just hoping maybe we would quit <laughs> i don't know or he's just rage roping us but he did ran down some time there all right so we're gonna start off with the water grave i'm gonna use the agonizing remorse over thought erasure Mostly because he can't um, mystical dispute it. All right, so fairy goes, and it exiles it, which is good. Yeah, that's why I like agonizing remorse it's against blue white control. It's better, and um, any of the escape creatures, it's better. Just because Elspeth can't bring it back now. We're gonna do it again. Hit second fairy. Drop the temple. And we can discard the Elspeth Conquers Death. The only thing is, he has a lot of other creatures, so we're going to keep that there. Uh, he has a lot of other creatures that he can put down. Okay, his Mystical Dispute now, which he can use against the Thought Erasure. We're going to keep. Stainful Stroke. I'm going to do this. We need our second blue source. Um, I wonder if it's worth running it out anyways. I think it is. Yeah, I'm going to run it out anyways. Get, get the Mystical Dispute out of his hand. So we have disdainful stroke that will hopefully catch something good. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it for Elspeth Conquers Death. Although it might be worth it if he then if he does it Elspeth and then runs out like a dream trawler so that if I counter this, Elspeth brings it back. Okay. Um, I'm gonna Uro. And hope to hit a land. Not this could be a really bad mystic. Okay, that's actually that's fine. So no dream trawler. If he hits dream trawler, I am okay. Thank God. Uh, I guess I make the same mistake. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Ah, look at that. Someone I once knew said magic's easy. I don't, I don't, that's Merchant, I, didn't, I don't know him. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm gonna do it again. Oh, no, well, I guess we don't have a choice. 
Let's get some pressure on. I mean, he has Elspeth Concrete's death. If we hit a land... Uh, not the right land. Okay. Well, we get punished. But we're now up to commence the end game, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. We have a lot of mana. So he's going to run a belt, run out of Elspeth probably to take out Uro. Oh. Not the Elspeth I was thinking about, but... All right. He gets too far behind, we discard half his hand, which is why I like Agonize with Morse in this deck so much. And it showcases the power, beat blue-white control. Um, uh, he wasn't, I don't think he really played that deck very, that well, and that version was a little bit weird, but I do like this deck against blue-white control a lot. Um, we also took out Jeskai Fire, so I think this is a good day. Uh, you can see this deck, this is, I've seen it around, I mean, it's this deck is winning, so this is something that is definitely competitive and definitely can win. Um, and it's fun, I mean, I don't usually play ramp, um, but I think this control variant of it is a little bit more fun to play than just ramp or flash or anything like that. So um, let me know if you give it a try. Let me know if you like the deck, anything that you've done to it. Happy to happy to hear it. Happy to try out new things. So um, this deck is a lot of fun and I, I enjoyed it a lot. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll see you next time.